because every other step along the way, I'm going to have to go through one through nine again. Um, so I wanted to really cover the numbers that were special and prominent, and I wanted to get us used to seeing double numbers and, and seeing double digit numbers and breaking them down. Now we get to move on into our soul's journey. Uh, some, uh, most other uh, numerologists would deal this either your destiny or your life path. For, for mastered self numerology, uh, my own numerology that I've, I've written myself, it's the soul's journey. Um, uh, I don't like to call it a destiny uh, because we have multiple destinations in our incarnation. And we could go any number of ways, any number of ways. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. I, one of these days I'll give you guys my story about I could have been and I should have been and I would have been however I am. Uh, uh, we'll go through that, uh, that story one of these days. Um, but in, 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 in master self numerology, I deal with the soul of everything in, in the astrology that I deal with, I deal with the soul. I don't deal with the, with the outer garment. I deal with the soul. So your, this is about your soul's journey. Uh, your soul's journey is in that name that you were assigned at birth. Uh, and for the purposes of your life, not just inter uh, getting an understanding of numerology, but for the purposes of your life, it's always about how you get there, not about where you're going. Let me say that again. It is always about how you get there, not where you are going. Because I can tell you guys, uh, uh, just from personal experience, <clears throat> that signposts and markers and, and destinations that have been set in stone for me uh, that I have set out to acquire and attain uh, somewhere along the way, the, the goalpost has been moved. And, the, the, and, and it was never, it's never about a location. Yeah, there are some locations that, that we're meant to go to and, 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 and we're, we're meant to experience things there, but it's never about where. It's about what, it's about how, it's about how you get there. So we're going to start talking about your soul's journey and that's in your name. So and with every birth, a soul incarnates. I'm kind of of the belief, you know, that because of soul contracts that we sign in order to come here, I truly believe that the soul, embryo, baby, whatever you want to call it, tells the mama what the name is going to be. I believe we name ourselves because we know what our soul contract is and we know what we've done in past lives. So we know what we need this incarnation to 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 advance and get closer to to our ultimate so yeah we we write into our name what we need with every birth with every birth a soul incarnates now we we are not talking about the end results of some actions of the soul but this, think about that. Every 
person that you see got a soul just like you got a soul. Now, some people, we, we, we can look at actions and, and look at results and, and think that they have to be soulless or just cold-blooded. And no, not necessarily. I believe they came to fulfill their purpose. We don't have to always agree with somebody's purpose. Your name has your purpose in it. And before you check out of here, you will fulfill it. <clears throat> Willingly or unknowingly, you will. So with every birth, a soul incarnates. Life, this life, each incarnation, <clears throat> it's not about uncertainty. Uh, it's not about chance. <clears throat> it's not about random <clears throat> uh, occurrences or coincidences. There are no coincidences in 3D. There are no, uh, ain't no random, there are no random acts of kindness. <laughs> in the moment, it may seem especially if you're on the receiving end, it may seem that there are random, it's a random act of kindness, but it's not. It's not. There, there are no uncertainties. There, there, there are no random chance. There is no coincidences. There is no, I, I, don't, I don't like the word luck. Ain't no luck. We, we make or, or, or ruin our own fortune. Has nothing to do with luck. Has to do with fate and karma and, and how you're living. Nothing to do with luck. Um, anybody got anything to, to say about, about the no coincidences, no random chance? Everything is faded and karmic, everything. The real word of coincidence is coincide. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Nothing happens that ain't supposed to. To you, for you, through you, to others, for others, through others, to, to an entity, to a country, to a county, a city, Everything that has a name got a journey and some karma. Everything. Every name at birth is given a divine journey or assignment. Is given a divine promise of opportunity and a divine personal privilege. Now let's 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 talk about all of this. Let's let's talk about this divine journey or divine assignment. Um, uh, I I truly believe that when we are when we are coming through the portal of birth, that we have all of our memories and our past lives and all of that with us. And the, the trip through the portal is so traumatic. Yeah, it just wipes out everything. And then we got to start over and evolve again. Yet when we come through that portal, we have a divine assignment. This, this what, what I'm doing right now was my assignment when I come through the portal February 9th, 1963 at 4.08 a.m. It was a Saturday morning. I had this assignment. And I had other assignments along the way that got me to my divine assignment. But I had other assignments along the way that shaped me and, and pointed me finally to this, my 
divine journey and assignment. Now, uh, the divine promise of opportunity is different than the assignment. The opportunity, the promise of opportunity means that wherever you are in your life and in your evolution, you will be given multiple opportunities to fulfill your divine journey and assignment. Multiple. I, 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 I started uh, 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 working for a automotive uh, finance company back in the uh, middle 90s. And uh, um, um, uh, I was uh, running a collection team and we were making collection calls on customers to pay their car bills. And I was the manager of, of one of the units and I would take talk offs and I would do spiritual talk to them and get them all squared away spiritually. And then I'd make sure that I got their payment. That I had an opportunity. Yeah, I was getting paid to do another job, but I also had an opportunity to do my divine assignment. At that time, that was part of my divine assignment. And a divine personal privilege. My divine personal privilege is that I get to do what I desire to do. Uh, I've just been told I got some questions on the book, so I'm going to go uh, and look. Uh, uh, Lupi Linnea is asking, when is one considered a soul in existence? At conception, prior to birth or after birth? Uh, for me, I, I don't. I don't get it. I'm not a, a, a expert at, at, at that. I just believe birth. I'm just saying at birth, not prior to, I don't know when it's in existence. I believe once uh, there's a point somewhere in there, uh, in the time from the, from the time the egg is fertilized until the baby comes through the portal that, that it becomes uh, a life. But yeah, that's above my pay grade to be deciding. That's, that's yeah, that's not for me to decide. So uh, for the purposes of this discussion, what I mean by birth, I just mean, you know, once the child comes out of the portal, you know, not, not, not making no, no decision about uh, when the soul and when is life, just, let's, just for the sake of this, when it, when it uh, breaches the portal. Uh, so every name at birth, and 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 when I talk about birth, I'm, uh, we're talking about specifically birth, uh, you know, the, of the from the female portal. But I'm talking about the birth of your business. It has a name. The birth of your dream. It has a name. The birth of your entrepreneurial thing. It, it everything has a name. And when you go and get your uh, 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 articles of incorporation. Yeah, that's the date. That's the birth date of your corporation, of your business. When you get your business license, that date that's on there, that's the birth date. It, it would be even better if you can get the time, get them to time stamp it when they actually signed it. Then you could run a, a full analysis of the name of your idea, the name of your business, the name of your, and it has a cycle. It has a divine journey and assignment, a divine promise of opportunity and a divine personal privilege. Everything is wrapped up in your name, everything. To know and understand what your name means is your most important spiritual awakening, awakening in each and every incarnation. You can have the most profound spiritual experiences you can have the some out of body experiences all of all of those are great and 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 fabulous and you know i'm still dealing with the uh, revolving door of metatron and those they just think it's kind of funny now they just walk around in here now they don't even wait for me to ask them to come they just be hanging out uh, uh 
How, all of that, all of that is great. That, that it, it's a, it's really, truly, truly a great, great experience. And sometimes I have to pinch myself and and just be real grateful to be me because it really, 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 from where I'm sitting, is really good to be me. Uh, sometimes, but to know and to understand what my name means is my most important spiritual awakening ever. It's, it's your most important spiritual awakening ever. Once you know and understand what your name means on all these levels, you will then begin to live a life of no mistakes, no missteps, no hiccups. Not saying you're going to have no downs, ups and downs. Things, you know, tides flow in and they go out. They come in and go out. Things go up, they go down. Yet with that understanding and knowing of your name, you'll be able to see those cycles and be able to be prepared for those cycles. So when you have a high cycle, you're not going to get all brand new, acting brand new. And then when you have a low cycle, you have socked something away. You'll be okay because you'll be able to see them coming instead of them just happening. And you just be like, oh, damn, really? To know and understand what your name means is your most important spiritual awakening. And trust me when I tell you guys this, I have been at this thing with numerology for 45 years. I've been studying, reading, writing, interpreting, doing my own analysis, 45 years. And I still learn something new about my name every now and again. Still, still evolving, it's still coming to me. And it's still, I still, I live by numerology. <laughs> Those that know me, they know, they know this. They've been in the car with me and hear me say 23.5 or 16.7, don't worry about it. I'm just counting license plates or addresses. They know me. They know I'm not going to a place that don't have one of my numbers in the address. I already know. I, I live it. I live it because it's the most important spiritual awakening I ever had. And, I, and I'm suggesting to everybody who's watching this live or watching the replay, get if you don't get nothing else, get to know, get a full knowing and a full understanding of what your name means. If you don't want to do anything else with numerology, get just get that, just get that, and it will it will help you and simplify. So it'll simplify your life to such a degree that you you be like, hmm, I didn't know that it could be this easy. Truly, truly, the best best uh, daily life uh, guidance tool you could ever get, hands down. Uh, Fulfilling your divine journey requirement is not always easy. At times it will not be what you desire <clears throat> as it may bring experiences you do not understand or can appreciate. Uh, gradually, however, as you keep grinding away at it, those experiences will shape you and prune you until you finally align with your master itself and start to realize the full accomplishment of your divine journey and the wonderful satisfaction that follows. And that's a fulfilling your life's purpose. Nothing more satisfying than aligning with your master self and living your life's purpose. Nothing is, is, is more fulfilling than that. I, I am fulfilled beyond measure, beyond measure. Uh, uh, and I know some people could look in, if they could look in uh, on my life, they would think, what is he so fulfilled about? He, it's no big deal. Yeah, to them, it's no big deal. But for me, this is it. This is everything. Fulfilling your divine journey requirement is not always easy. When I was going through my colon issues back in 2006 and 2007 and 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, man, that's, that's, that, that took a lot just to say all of those. How much more do you think it took to get through all of that? Not knowing what is, what is wrong with you. Uh, 31 different emergency room visits. 
uh, 13 different misdiagnoses. Um, yeah. At the time, I, I, I didn't understand why, why. I never went through the why me. I, I've never been a why me person, but I didn't understand this, how could that happen? I, I you know, I, I wasn't living a reckless lifestyle. I wasn't doing anything. I damn sure didn't appreciate it at the time. You know, just when I was on my upward arc in corporate America, here come the health issue. Health issue. I lost the last four jobs I had not because of performance, but because I couldn't get to work. I couldn't stay at work. I was out sick too much. Did I, I did my job while I was there. I was just out sick too much. You know, 2009, I found out that this is what I was supposed to be doing. And I kicked against the goals. And, but I started to chip away and grind away. And, and the experiences that I was going through uh, to get out of my old life and old self, uh, I began to look at them and allow them to shape me and to prune me. You know, I was talking to someone today and, and the, the subject of pruning uh, came up and I've always been of this opinion that if the tree could talk, that as soon as you trim that limb off it, I bet you the tree be like, hey, man, what the hell? What you doing? That was my arm, dude. What you doing? Shit hurt, man. Pruning for us, it hurts too. It is designed to hurt. Yet once the new growth comes out from the prune, that's when you realize your full accomplishment of your divine journey. That's the, that's the fruit. You guys are the fruit on my tree. I'm the, uh, my divine journey is to be the tree. Y'all are the fruit because not only am, am I teaching and equipping you, but you're gonna point this to someone else. You guys are gonna be, be the tree of your own. So just keep grinding away. Even when you get to a part of your journey that you're like, man, I ain't even feeling this shit. I'm cool. And you want to say deuces, bitches, to it? Just keep grinding away because those experiences are, are the shape you and prune you until you finally align with your master self. And then you'll realize your full accomplishment of your journey. And you'll have that wonderful satisfaction of fulfilling your life's purpose. Any comments on that one? Anybody? All right. Uh, your birth name tells your story. Mark Edward Pyle tells my story. All other names, nicknames, name changes, signatures, and married names are channels through which your soul's journey is worked and played out through. So Mark Edward Pyle tells my story. It's, everything is wrapped up in Mark Edward Pyle. Pi Frisbee Metatron is the channel through which my journey is going to work and play itself out. When, when, when ladies uh, uh, get married and take on the husband's family name. Her maiden name is her story. And through that husband's last name is the channel through which her journey will play out as long as she keeps that name. So whatever is recorded on your official document, is what is playing out. Not what was meant to be put on there. So if there are, if there has been misspellings or omissions, I suggest you correct your original birth certificate at the county office in the county that you were born in. I suggest you go and have it Corrected. 
If not, you're playing out the name that is on that document. Whatever is on that birth certificate, whatever is signed in and numbered, boom. That's what it is. Any other name, nickname, honeybee, nickname, Victoria's nickname, raspberry, name changes, Pi Frisbee, Metatron, signature, Mark E. Pyle, MEP, your initials. You know, when you initial, that's a signature. And married names are just channels. You're going to live out that name that's official. Sometimes we don't like our names. <laughs> well, we play out that name. Yes, we do. And anything we change it to is just the channel. It's just the coat. You know, Pi Frisbee Metatron is the clothes that I put on to Mark Edward Pyle. Pi Frisbee Metatron is the suit and the shoes and the shirt and the glasses and the beads and yeah, all of the accessories and the adornment. That's that's Pi Frisbee Metatron. Take all that shit off of me and I, I'm Mark Avery Pyle. Any comments on, on your birth name tells your story. And then lastly, I wanna let us all know that your name is so much more than just what you'll answer to. Y'all hear me, y'all hear me what I'm saying in this? Your name is so much more than what you will answer to. Yes, Lupe Linnea, breath is the soul, yes. So being that your name is much more than what you'll answer to, let me tell you what your name is, <clears throat> what your full name at birth is. If you, if you got a pencil and paper, you guys can write these down. Number one, your full name at birth, as recorded on your documents, it's your life purpose. Your whole life's purpose is in your name. First, middle, last name. First, middle, middle, last name. You got two. First, middle, and, and hyphen two last names. It's, it's all in there. Number two, it's what must be accomplished by the individual in this incarnation. What's written in your name must be accomplished by you <clears throat> in this incarnation. And it will be, guaranteed, guaranteed. Whatever's written in your name, you will end up doing it before you check out of 3D. That's number two. Number three, <clears throat> it's your field of opportunity. Folks, you know, we are, they always ask us since when we're little in school, what do you want to be when you grow up? I don't know, I want to be a fireman, I want to be a policeman, I want to be a doctor, I want to be this, I want to be that. If they would teach this in regular school like Thomas Jefferson wanted to and they laughed at him, then we wouldn't be guessing at what we wanted to do when we grew up. We'd know by the time we were in fourth, fifth grade what we were, what our sole purpose was. So it wouldn't be any guess. Wouldn't we have to like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, we know. Number, let's see, one, two, three, four. It's what you must give of yourself to others and to life. Oh, 
I, some people will balk at that because that's accountability and responsibility. But I know everybody on this call is accountable and responsible. And everybody on this call know how to own their own shit. So, yeah, there's a responsibility in your name it, because it's what you must give of yourself, meaning what you serve, how you serve, and how you interact with others, to others, and to life. So it means you got to give a fuck according to your numbers, according to your journey, whatever your soul says you're supposed to give a fuck about, that's what you got to give a fuck about. I'm just, you know, I don't know no other way to say it. That's just, that, that's just how I know how to say it. Number five, let's say one, two, three, four. Yeah, number five. It's the kind of people you should meet and work with. Yeah, your soul journey number. Yeah, you need to hang out with them folks and work with them people. If, if, if everybody worked and hung out with the people of their soul journey, it, it wouldn't be no need for police stations. It wouldn't be no need for jails. It wouldn't be no need because everybody would get along. World's not made up like that. I know that's, that's fantastical, but I'm just saying it's the kind of people that you should meet and work with. That's number five. Number six, it's the environment and point of contact with others that you should seek. If you are, if you are a, a, a three soul's journey, you shouldn't be seeking a five or a seven or a nine or a one soul journey. You shouldn't seek that environment. You should seek the three environment and the three point of contact you you have much better uh uh experiences much better associations much better endeavors if you handle your business and meet people do that according to your numbers to your journey your soul's journey your soul's urges and your soul's energy numbers we'll get into those later on and lastly it's the spiritual mission that each of us have been assigned. Remember when we were talking about the numbers one through nine, there's a spiritual code for each one of those numbers. And that's each one of our spiritual mission. We've each been given a spiritual mission when we come through that portal. I preached a sermon once in the Baptist church that you know, everybody had a role, even some folks is, their role is to be a pew sitter so that the preacher can have folks sitting in the pews to preach to. That's your role. That's, that's, that's what you came to be. You came to fill that role. While the preacher came to fill the role as the preacher, some folks came to fill the role as the pew sitter. And that's all good. It's, it's all good. Once you find out what your spiritual mission is and do it, then you'll be fine. And if yours is just to, just to hold the umbrella uh, to keep the sun off of people at the table, then do that. Do that. I'm a firm believer in find out what your mission is and do that. If your mission is just to enjoy everything, then do it. You, you'll live a much better life a much healthier, a much cleaner life. Uh, any questions, any comments on your soul's journey? Nope. All right, well, I wanna, this was a, a breezy class today. When uh, when we get back into it uh, on Saturday, we will cover soul journeys one through four. And then Tuesday, we will hit uh, five through nine. So um, some of it may sound repetitive, yet the, the three soul journey is a little bit different than just the essence the the essence and soul number of the three it, it's a little bit different so um 
I'm thankful and grateful for everybody uh, being here today. And um, uh, if no one has anything to to add or want to make a comment or a question about anything, um, we can uh, move along and get ready to end this thing. So I want to leave us with, with these two thoughts and see how it resonates with each and every one of us. <clears throat> Number one, do whatever you can to start living your name, purpose, life, and lifestyle. And I guarantee you, you will enjoy a satisfied, secured, and sustained life. That's number one. And number two, once you start living this name, purpose, lifestyle, and have your satisfaction, security, and sustenance, I want you to do yourself and everybody in your immediate circle a huge, huge favor. Once you've connected with your mastered self and, and you're living your purpose life and you're doing all the things, you got yourself together. Start happening to life instead of allowing life to happen to you. Be the cause that you know you're supposed to be. Don't just get this awareness. Don't get this understanding of yourself. Don't get a spiritual mission and then just hoard it. Y'all watch the watch A and E. You know that show Hoarders. Some of that filthy stuff. Yeah, don't don't hoard it. Start happening to life instead of collecting stuff. Be the cause that you know you are. Take control of your experience and become the master of your creation. I'm thankful and grateful for everyone to be here today. This has been On the Sevens with Pyphreus B. Metatron, where we come to awaken, ascend, and expand. We do go through the 88 steps into your mastered self. And if you continue to make on the sevens with Pyphreus B Metatron a part of your soul's journey and you link up with your mastered self I guarantee you your master self awaits you somewhere along the line I love each and every one of you guys I'm not saying goodbye forever I am just saying goodbye for now see you guys soon bye <laughs>